I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the American Chemical Society Spring 2019 National Meeting in Orlando. We're joined today by Dr. Sandra Luskin and Molly Austin from Oregon State University. They're studying fish slime, an untapped source of potential new antibiotics. Dr. Luskin? Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, my research group at Oregon State University is interested in finding new antibiotics. Um, and I think in one project, we really went to a really um, unexplored source. So we are interested in exploring the fish microbiome for its potential to find new antibiotics and new cancer treatments. Um, in the first slide, you see our collaborator, who's Misty Page Tran. She's a professor of biology uh, at Cal State Fullerton. And she and her students started swapping uh, Pacific fish, coastal fish and deep sea fish, uh, and those fish mucus were sent to Oregon State to be processed in my laboratory. Um, we are interested in finding, you see the swaps there and some deep sea examples. In the next slide, you see the process. So in my laboratory, undergraduate researcher Molly Austin uh, and graduate student Paige Mondelaire are both working on processing the fish mucus. We are thinking there are microbes, bacteria, and fungi within the mucus that support the mucus physical protection as a slime, and these chemical components in the mucus haven't been studied. So we've been isolating bacteria out of the fish mucus slime, and from these 47 bacteria in this pilot study, Molly Austin was able um, to look at one specific um, bacterium very much in detail, and she found chemistry that is antibacterial and cytotoxic. On the next slide, this is Molly's work. Maybe I can hand it over to Molly. Sure. Um, hello, my name is Molly Austin. I'm a third year chemistry major at Oregon State University, um, and I work on the Pacific Fish Microbiome Project. Um, here you can see a few of the compounds that I've isolated from a Pseudomonas species. The Pseudomonas species was really interesting um, because it showed both cytotoxic and antibiotic activity. It was very potent against metacillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Um, the structures are shown here, phenazine 1-carboxamide and HQNO are both very potent antibiotics against MRSA. All right, thank you, Dr. Luskin and Molly. Are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Hi, so it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, and I'm interested in finding out more about the novelty of this source of antibiotics. Are we likely to see any new um, mechanisms of action or any new kind of classes of antibiotics? Um, because I know there haven't been any new classes of antibiotics. I think we're being told for like decades now. So yeah, that's how optimistic are you? That's a very good point. Um, so, so far we have not found new chemistries, but we were really surprised by the breadth of chemistry we've seen, the different chemical classes we have seen. And from 47 strains, we only looked at one and found six very potent compounds. Um, we've been doing natural products discovery for the last 10 years, and these microbiome bacteria haven't just not studied much in many, many other research groups. They have been overlooked. And so I think there is potential. If 50% of our strains are active in this really small pilot study, there's chances there are new novel structures and possibly new mode of actions. And also, just another question to ask about how the fish microbiome compares, say, with the human microbiome, and also how the mucus of the fish is different from its microbiome. Um, I, I guess. Very good question. <laughs> um, so we're just exploring um, what bacteria are contributing to a healthy fish microbiome. Um, we are, will collaborate with taxonomists that are interested in the bacterial population on certain fish mucus. So I think in the last slide we see the most data we got from a pink surf perch. Um, many people that go fishing in the Pacific um, coast find those fish. And we found this Pseudomonas bacterium that's associated with the mucus, and it's very potent in making these antibiotics. So the follow-up study is now, we just received fish from our collaborator to see, is this bacterium truly present in other pink surf perch? Is this contributing to a healthy fish microbiome? But we know less about the fish microbiome than we do, in my opinion, about the human microbiome. So I think there's lots to see and discover. And just a last question about the, um, it mentions in the press release that this could have applications as well for um, fish farming. And I'm thinking particularly of like salmon farming. You know, there's a massive use of antibiotics. How do you envisage this technology could be adapted for use to actually reduce 
antibiotics in fish farming? That's a very good question. Um, so since we don't have a grasp on what's a healthy fish mi microbiome, the idea would be to see if this Pseudomonas species, is it a healthy contributor to the fish mucus, to the fish health? Um, and in fish farming, where fish are too close, um, that could be added on. If this is an environmental bacterium that improves fish health, it could be maybe released in fish farms without doing other harm in the environment. Um, but again, that's really early, but it is an application. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bela Buslik, ACS. Um, any of these um, microorganisms that are in the uh, in the fish or fish microbiome uh, are human path pathogens. Like uh, they, uh, most micro uh, 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 organisms pr produce something. Uh, and uh, of course to protect themselves against other mi uh, microorganisms. But are these, uh, these actually something that are compatible with humans? And how much of the, uh, the micro, uh, uh, micro uh, organisms uh, defense mechanism is, is cytotoxic to everything else or, or it is the microorganism is itself uh, uh, human pathogen? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, so the strain that Molly looked at is a Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It's a gram-negative bacterium that can be uh, an immunocompromised patient. It can be a human pathogen. So the question is, was it a hitchhiker that we isolated from the fish mucus that came into the aquatic environment, maybe by humans, or is it truly uh, an inhabitant of the fish microbiome? So you're right, there are many commensal bacteria we have on our skin that fish also might have on, on their skin. Um, in the far end, if we find a chemistry lead that can provide a new antibiotic, it doesn't matter really if it does this in the environment, if we can show in vitro and then in vivo, it is uh, effective. Um, so we, we kind of see it as a source for chemistry we haven't seen before. Um, if, if it really acts as an antibiotic in the fish system, we don't know yet. Well, it, it's actually the pseudomonads that, that kind of picked up my interest on this because a lot of pseudomonads are human path, uh, pathogens. Correct. Uh, the other question has to do with, uh, with the, uh, the uh, carbohydrate uh, polymers in, in, in fish slime. Uh, they're, they're reasonably good, uh, good, at least a lot of carbo, uh, carbohydrate polymers are uh, essentially uh, antibiotic uh, mm -hmm. to a lot of a lot of organisms. How the heck do you de deliver all these things to uh, to the right place? Because mm -hmm. of course they don't exactly go through membranes uh, as as easily. Like you know, putting it in, in a plate and and seeing activity because they're in direct contact with the microorganism is one thing. Right. Uh, uh, trying to use it uh, uh, in a human being, that's another thing. That's correct. Um, the one class Molly found, the phenazine class of antibiotics, has been shown in humans that it can penetrate gram-negative biofilms in human application. And the mucus, you're right, is a, is a physical barrier, right? So, but we think that the phenazines could have a similar effect in the mucus, maybe defending to outside invaders, as the phenazines are clinically studied right now for biofilm penetration. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Charles Burquist from Science Friday. Um, I guess two questions, one more general. How much do we know about the uh, fish microbiome in general? Like, is it, are there some microbes that live on all fish and others that this one only lives on striped herring and not on spotted herring or something like that? We looked really hard for studies, and there are not many. Um, there are some people that looked into the global population, uh, but basically also only in taxonomy and genetic markers on fish. Um, there is no evidence we found on no our literature yet that says, you know, for pink surf perch, that's a healthy microbiome, and that's not. Um, so I think we are far behind the human microbiome here. And second, Molly, could you just like walk us through what your process looks like? I mean, are you 
I don't know, rubbing Q-tips across fish, or does somebody hand you a bucket of goo that you have to then work with, or <laughs> what's, what's your day? Um, so I'm actually just the chemist. We have a biology um, collaborator at California State University Fullerton, uh, Professor Misty Pei Tran, um, and she's the one who does the swabbing. Um, and she identifies the fish. Um, pretty much, I believe she just um, gets a sample from the outside of the fish. She caps it, um, and then we receive um, a sterile sample um, that I then process in the lab. You receive a, a sample of compounds or a sample of bacteria that then you, you have to culture or what? Um, I receive mucus on the swab with some dirt samples, anything from the outside of the scales that she collects. Um, I then transfer that onto an acre plate um, and isolate any comp or any uh, strains that I can. Katie Cottingham from ACS. So, um, have you tested the antibiotics on humans yet, or has this just been in vitro? Um, yeah, that's very early. So in this pilot study, we tested all the compounds in vitro and cell culture um, mechanisms for antibiotic activity. Um, and the phenazines that Molly found are in clinical exploration for human application. So these structures have been found and they have been pursued actively. Um, the great hope is to find a new compound for sure, a new antibiotic. Um, but having 50% of our strains being active, I am feel comfortable that we might find something new in that regard. Yeah. And um, do you have any ideas how the bacteria then are killing colon cancer cells? And how did you get the idea to test for cancer cells? So in my laboratory, we um, test broadly um, basically any chemical that comes in my lab. We test for antibiotic activity, gram-positive, gram-negative, escape pathogens, the one that are really threatening us. Um, we have a panel of five cancer cell lines that we just use routinely to see um, is an antibiotic truly an antibiotic, or does it also have cytotoxic cell toxic properties? We also test for HIV-1 um, antiviral activity. So it's a rather broad spectrum. All the chemistry goes through. Um, and many antibiotics um, historically have been found being cytotoxic as well. Um, and so we always test in both assays. Um, one compound that Molly found is only cell toxic, not antibiotically active. So we're not sure. It could be that as a defense mechanism in the mucus, maybe that a predator would not attack the mucus or not have a bite. Um, but we don't know yet. We have to explore more. Any other questions? Thank you. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live underscore Orlando 2019. Please join us for our next press conference at 11 a.m. today on on-demand polymers that could lead to novel computing and fraud detection technologies. Thank you.